And this is like kind of the, the go-to drill that I give to everybody when they're learning. Get set up, feel what impact should feel like beside the ball, turn back to a position where you haven't manipulated the club, yep. and then turn through and see if you can maintain all those alignments. Love it. Once you can do that, then it's like, okay, I can, I can do that. Now when I step into the ball, yeah, I, can, I can guarantee, if I can guarantee it in a practice swing, I got a good chance of getting in the, in the actual swing. And I want to try one of those in a second, but I think when we were talking off camera before a little bit, anyone who doesn't hit the ball pretty darn solid all the time and or have a predictable pattern that they play with, yeah. I hesitate to always throw a score on it, but to me, if you're like 85 and above-ish, right? Yeah. Certainly, um, this, regardless of where you are in your swing, even if it was just a warm-up piece, Right? Yeah, it, this is like, if I'm going to go play tomorrow, like I don't compete anymore, so I don't practice that much. Yeah. But if I had to play like 18 holes with a, a student or someone tomorrow, I would just go into my studio and hit like 40 balls with my pitching wedge and just really you're just grooving the sensation for a solid impact. Yeah. If you can groove the feeling for a solid impact, that's going to give you the chance to recall it later. Hey guys, before we dive into the video, two quick things. Number one, our golf schools this summer in Bethlehem PA are already filling up, and I would really love to have you come out and uh, hang out with me for two days in Bethlehem PA for a golf school. If you're interested in coming out, we'll include a link in the description down below. I would love to have you. If you can't come out to Bethlehem PA for a school, I would still love to coach you and work with you through kagornogolf.com. That's our online community full of golfers like you and I looking to improve. And most importantly, as a member of kagornogolf.com, you get access to our Facebook group, which which is where all the gold is and you can post that video like I mentioned. You get access to everything we have including all the master classes, the member library, the quick fix section and the practice section. I would really love to see you there. We'll put a link in the description down below. Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk about the square to square swing method. And as you may notice here on my right is Mr. Sam Golden. Sam, thanks for coming out, buddy. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Appreciate you. Sam, someone I've been watching online for a long period of time and just recently he came up with a new invention that he has, a golf bag that we're going to talk about later on in this video that amongst many things provides you a very easy opportunity to give yourself feedback via your phone. We'll get into that later on um, as we go. So. Sam, in today's video, square to square, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's how I was introduced to you way back in the early YouTube right, days. Right. And so what I'd like to start out with here in a minute is let's just talk about square to square and kind of the ideas behind it. And then in this video in particular, if we talk about the setup and the backswing pieces, and then maybe in the next one, we'll kind of cover the downswing uh, follow through. So okay, sure. let's start yeah. with square to square. What's the general idea here behind all this? Yeah, the general idea is that we're trying to get set up in a position that allows for solid contact or sweet yeah. spot contact. And then throughout the swing, we don't want to mess that up. So I just mean by that, if I'm setting up with the club in a position that allows for sweet spot contact, I would need the club to be in position where the ball could touch the third or maybe fourth groove. So here at address with the shaft vertical, yep. it's touching like the second groove. That's not the sweet spot, right? Gotcha, okay. So I want to lean it in position so that it could touch the third or fourth groove. So now that's, that's impact, that's ideal impact. So I'm just going to build my setup around ideal impact. Yeah. So that the handle is going to be a little bit more forward than we might have seen in a traditional setup. So I really like that tagline of like setting up for a good uh, impact and compression position and just kind of leaving it there. Yeah, right? yeah. Kind of don't screw it up, it up right? Yeah. And so if you put that club down for a second, because that's something that I don't think about a lot and I don't think a lot of maybe people think about. Yeah. If you were to just put the shaft up and down and just kind of reiterating what you're saying here, where the golf ball is relative to the grooves on the club, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And getting it to a position where it hits the third, fourth. Groove. Yeah, the sweet yeah. spot. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm if I just slide that handle forward enough until I get the club in position to touch the third or fourth groove, then I know I'm in a sweet spot impact. Yeah, I gotcha. So then just build my setup around that position. Got it. And then from there, everything else in terms of the square to square is pretty neutral, like 50-50 weight-ish type of deal. Yeah, I think what I you see a lot of players, the more the shorter clubs have more loft, so the handle leans a little bit more forward. Yep. So when that handle leans forward, you'll see the weights just shift a little bit onto the lead foot. Got it. So it's a lot of players will end up at about 60-40 with the shorter irons somewhere around 50-50 with the mid irons and then maybe even a little bit back with the longer irons. Gotcha, yeah, yeah depending on what you're trying to produce there. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Can we see a hit one with that setup position there? Yeah, for just sure. Just a little, yeah. So I'm just gonna get set up, put the club in position where, the, where it's lined up to about the fourth groove, get my body in position that fits that, 
and then I'm just gonna turn back, turn through. Yeah, beautiful. All right, cool, Sam. So let me hop in there. Let's go through these setup pieces for me. Um, because as we were playing around here a little bit before, and yeah. I, I really like that groove thought um, yeah. that I don't normally think about. And when I go in here like this, I'm gonna go like this. Let me just head over here, Sam, for a sec. Yeah. When I go in here like this, what I see a lot of golfers do, and kind of what's easy for me here, is to set up with the shaft pretty much straight up and down. Right. Which gets my hands, let's just say, in the middle of my legs. Yeah. Right? But yeah. of the club kind of straight towards my belt buckle. Yeah. Uh, that's not at all what I want to be like at an impact position. That wouldn't be ideal. In fact. <laughs> right, right, right. So really no purpose for me doing that. I think what we would see good players do um, and getting to the same part as what you're saying here is the the, sh the shaft certainly would be leaning forward, which right. makes the, from my angle, makes the face look like it's tilted down. Yeah, it's, a lot of people say you're de-lofting the club. Yeah. But then at the same time, if we look at the launch angles for the PGA Tour, they're about four degrees lower yeah. than the launch angles for the, you know, mid handicap. So they, we're not, we're just trying to get you closer to what's optimal. Yeah. yeah. And like they are taking loft off. Yeah. Right? So compared to you. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, it yeah, is exactly. lower than what you used to, exactly. but it, it needs to be. Yeah. Should and be. that's, and that's the face looking where it's supposed to when you, when you get the impact, which is the whole point he said before. Exactly. And then if I were to put my hands on there, for me, it feels like the shaft and hands are maybe like inside left thigh-ish. Yeah, left yeah, thigh, something about, like that. Yeah. And this would be where I would feel, it feels more forward than I currently do. And I know when I look at myself, my shaft's a little farther back than I want it to be. Okay, okay. And so this to me feels like what it should look like at impact. Yeah. Right, something like this. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so I'm gonna hit a little one here like this, just with that one piece. Yeah, that uh, feels good, Sam. Directly over the target, so pretty good. All right, Sam, so setup piece is there, love that. That felt better for me than normal. Um, let's flip flop spots and let's okay. talk, assuming someone gets those setup pieces in there, right? Sure. Um, what are the top one, two, three things during the backswing? What are we trying to do during the backswing with the square to square? Yeah, so ideally, if we've already identified where we want to be at impact, and we know that's like the optimal place to be at impact, we just don't want to do anything that would take us too far away from that. Yeah. So if I set up and I've got my hands in that position at impact and I feel like, okay, this is where I want to be again. If I start hinging my wrists up or rolling the club back, opening the face a ton. Now, if I look back where that would be at impact, it, it's really far off. So I'd have to unhinge and roll to get the face square again. So we're not going to do any of that. Yep. We're going to keep this all, this structure, these impact alignments intact as we turn back. And we're just going to feel like our upper body or upper tor torso does the turning. Awesome. So we set for the impact alignment and then we turn back with the body. And you'll see that the club face hasn't rotated in any way. It's still very square to the arc. Yeah. My hands are in the same position they were in at a dress. I've just turned my body back. Yeah. So now coming back, eventually we'll talk about impact, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then coming back down, I don't have to do anything manipulation wise to get the club back into that impact position. And so as a checkpoint, and I'm a big like repeat what you say type of thing a million times. Yeah, yeah. As a checkpoint, if you could do that one more time, Sam. Sure. And from the setup position and get us to maybe first parallel here during the takeaway. So from here to there, I think a couple of things, if, if someone were to watch themselves, hey, am I doing this right or not? The point you mentioned about the club face being tilted down. Yeah. This being up would not be where you would be at impact. Right. And I really love that as like a, what are we talking about here? Like use it as a reference point for all things here early. It's such a good way to do that. Yeah. Um, can we do it one more time? So the club face being um, tilted down here and then the general idea of to get from the setup to that point, mm -hmm. it's kind of all upper body, chest and shoulder motion. Yeah. Right. Just turning my torso, the hips are going to turn naturally to respond to that action. Yeah. But you don't have to think move my hip in this way to get your, to get the torso to turn. Yeah. So just setting it address turning back and once I'm here I mean there's a lot of different things you could say about this and you know how low the lead shoulder is and things like that or if you're in your spine tilt but really I think a great point like you were just making just if the club is square to the arc or if it's looking down toward the ball and it's somewhere in this general position it's yeah. not back here it's not over there yeah um, then you're in a pretty good spot I you're, love that you can just turn back to the ball and make solid contact can we have you hit one more little one with that yeah so I'm, I'll just do and this is like kind of the the go-to drill that I give to everybody when they're learning, get set up, feel what impact should feel like beside the ball, turn back to a position where you haven't manipulated the club, yep. and then turn through and see if you can maintain all those alignments. Love it. Once you can do that, then it's like, okay, I can 
I can do that. Now when I step into the ball, yeah, I, can, I can guarantee, if I can guarantee it in a practice swing, I got a good chance of getting in the, in the actual swing. And I want to try one of those in a second, but I think when we were talking off camera before a little bit, anyone who doesn't hit the ball pretty darn solid all the time and or have a predictable pattern that they play with, yeah. I hesitate to always throw a score on it, but to me, if you're like 85 and above-ish, right? Yeah. Certainly, um, this, regardless of where you are in your swing, even if it was just a warm-up piece, right? Yeah, it, this is like, if I'm gonna go play tomorrow, like I don't compete anymore, so I don't practice that much. Yeah. But if I had to play like 18 holes with a student or someone tomorrow, I would just go into my studio and hit like 40 balls with my pitching wedge and just, really you're just grooving the sensation for a solid impact. Yeah. If you can groove the feeling for a solid impact, that's gonna give you the chance to recall it later. Absolutely. So anybody, like five handicap, 10 handicap, 20 handicap, we really just wanna be able to hit the ball consistently solid. Yeah. And so if you can do that, if you can find a way to train that, that's, Absolutely. that's really gonna help. Let's hop in, I wanna try one of these. Yeah. And, I, and I don't, and when I say that too, for everyone watching, like that's, not to say someone who shoots 65 shouldn't do it. Right, I mean, I do it. So. Right, yeah, yeah, 65, and the whole ones we'll get to. <laughs> it's like, if you shoot 65, I'm not gonna, you can do kind of whatever you want. Yeah, from sure, my book, I, right? we don't need to instruct you. Yeah, you like, you're, you're cool. If you shoot 85, 95, 105, et cetera, and you're looking to improve, then to me, this becomes more non-negotiable. Yeah, if you can't hit the ball consistently solid, nothing else matters. Yeah, like, yeah. Start, start where matter, you're supposed to start, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So starting from the beginning. Okay, so just get into a position where the ball would hit the sweet spot. Yep. So lined up to the third or fourth groove, good. And then when you turn back, we're just gonna feel that the hands and arms stay kind of passive. The upper body turns you back to there. Yep, gotcha. So now, what's really cool about this is most amateurs don't turn enough. Mm -hmm. This guarantees that you've made a huge turn. Yeah. You're almost to, para like, you're almost to 90 degrees at waist high. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you're just gonna feel the left shoulder turn through, Goodbye and that's you. your finished position. Yeah. I just think staying square the whole time. What's so simple that I don't think about that way is getting the ball onto the sweet spot of the darn club at setup. It's like, such a good visual. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah, I love that a lot. Okay, so ball on the sweet spot for me feels like my handle's kind of inside left thigh. Good. I'm feeling kind of more shoulder turn to here, no arms and hands. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go longer than that, I'm sure, but I'm going to... Most likely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do a little short one here first. Feeling like I'm setting my impact kind of where the ball and club should be and keeping that. Don't keep, the, keep that where that is. Yeah, that feels really good. Really awesome. It, it, like we got into it a little bit there, but on the yeah. backswing, but it forces you to turn the body really well through because you're, if you don't, if you were to stop at any time, all that stuff that you set up that was so good at address would all collapse and fall apart. Uh, yeah, so 100%. It, it guarantees you're gonna make a good turn on the backswing, good turn on the through swing. And what I really like about it too, and then I'm gonna dig in more in a minute with one or two more backswing pieces is by focusing on one or two or three biggies, yeah, right? yeah. Like the queen bee, I heard another thing. You can knock out a bunch of other shit that can come up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that being a big one. So um, let's pause for a second and let's talk about one or two other pieces about the backswing. Okay, cool. cool. All right, Sam, so let's say someone hopped in, they get the ball in the uh, sweet spot at address. I'm stealing that from now on. They get the early phases of the takeaway correct, right? The face stays relatively square to the arc. Right. And then the upper body is kind of controlling the beginning pieces. Is there another one or two pieces from there on that could be important? Yes, I think the big thing to watch out for is our natural tendency to just lift the arms and use the hands the rest of the way. Gotcha. Um, I don't know why, but it just subconsciously feels like, okay, I've done that a little bit, now I'm gonna get this thing in back yeah. of my hands. Yeah. Um, I see that a lot from players. Just getting to here, they can get there really good and then they'll quickly lift their hands and Got arms. It. So if we can just remember that it's, it's trying to keep all the alignments we set at address as long as possible or as close as possible so that we don't have to do a lot of work coming back down. So that just means I was set up here at address with my, for me a pitching wedge, it sets my weight a little bit forward because I've set the handle forward. So when I go back, I don't want to have my weight shift a bunch off the ball because then I'd have to move a bunch coming back in. So one thing is that my weight would stay more centered. So just, or not necessarily centered, but close to where it was yeah, at address yeah. yep. as I turn back. And then as I'm going back, just being conscious that if that club face is still relatively square to the arc, it's gonna be a lot easier to deliver it back square to the arc. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend anybody who's like getting past this phase, when you start going to longer back swings, left arm parallel to the ground or shoulder height for the hands yeah. is a really good checkpoint where 
most people can still keep all those alignments intact. And if you're, if you're in those alignments there and you turn through really good rotation to impact, you're going to smash it. Yeah. So like you don't need to swing much further back than that. I'm very glad you said that. And I, and I was going to hop in there right after that was beautiful. You're a professional at this <laughs> is when you come back here, let's flip flop spots for one more second. So when, when I come back here and do this, again, tying everything back into kind of what am I looking for at impact to hit it solid? Let me make this as simple as possible and keep as much of that as possible. When I go back, if I do keep the, let's say I set it here mm -hmm. and I keep the club face more square to the arc, we'll say tilted down here. Yeah. And kind of, I always say like more towards the camera, like. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind That's of just the one that I, I used to, yeah. That is going to make the loft on the club be where like good ball strikers are. Yeah. And so I bet a lot of people, like I've got a nine iron. My nine iron, let's say, hit 150. Yeah. Right? When I take this and I actually have the face square in the loft, I could probably hit it. I bet people would hit it farther. They will absolutely hit it farther with a three quarter swing yeah. this way than they would if they opened it, came through, and cut underneath it a little bit. And it's not the length of swing, it's the loft and the face angle. It's the loft, the impact alignments. Are they yeah. in a good structure powerfully? And then how much turn did we have? Yeah. So by starting it with the turn in the backswing, we created all of this turn. And I've got a full 90 degree shoulder turn when my hands are at left are at shoulder height. Yep. So I'm home. You're good. I'm done. Yeah, now I, love I can that, dude. I love that. that on the way through and let me do really one with that balls. and I really like my little adjustment I'm making here with the face in the sweet spot that is fully stolen I'm feeling my shoulders early the face kind of staying pointed at the ball yeah. down towards the ground I like and then kind of continuing to turn keeping the face more square I like that the sensation you mentioned more or less keeping the face at the ball longer yeah. even all the way up to the top yeah right? it really conceptually it, it works even if it's not fully happening yeah the feel of that yeah I like that a lot and the other thing I like a lot, Sam, too, is like as we work through here, there's a lot of different, I'm going to hit one or two, there's a lot of different golfers and swings. 80, 85, 90% of people have a face that's too open who struggle. Yeah. Right? Too open and too lofted. So too lofted. Pointed to the right, uh, if you're a right-hand golfer, pointed to the right and too high. So like do this, exaggerate it yeah. to the point where like make your new problem, you're hitting some hooks left. Yeah. Right? Like solid contact pure solid low launching boring draws like yeah. who doesn't want that like, <laughs> that would be a good blister, new problem blister some draws and then you know we'll talk if that becomes too much of yeah, that's issue. right so ball in the sweet spot shoulders early face staying at the ball that's yep, kind of what i'm beautiful feeling. that's great yeah and those all feel really good that's for so me. solid so you should start seeing the ball launch lower and with yeah. a, if, if anything with a shorter club should have a little bit of a draw tendency cool and we that's all geometry why that is but that's what you should see if you're doing this properly if they're still going right you're opening the face yeah i love period. it love it perfect awesome all right sam so we have the minimal golf bag here and i will say as a golfer of 20 years at this point in time um, i've yet to be super excited about a golf bag yeah. that i've seen before so i do i do feel good about this i saw this with you at the pga show mm -hmm. There was just like droves of people around you. I had to like sneak in there to shake your hand, but I got to mess around with it a little bit without you kind of us talking about it. So I thought it'd be cool if we go over it a little bit and kind of let me know about the features. Um, Cause I think I'm going to take one of these bad boys uh, back with yeah, me. Yeah, you need one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I think probably for you and I, the, the most exciting feature is yeah. the, the phone pocket. Yep. Uh, it's a place where you can store your phone, but also you can just slip it in there and film your swing anytime you want. So if we're on the driving range, yeah or on the course, you can get that feedback of what your swing's looking like, capture almost every swing, you know? So when I'm at the range, I come down, I pop my bag, let's say right over there, yeah. I would have that and I could see a video of my own swing exactly. right from face on, or yeah. down the line. Yeah, or yeah. down the line. Like most ranges, this is the hard one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great if you can find it, but you can Perfect. always find it down the line. No more excuses can. for not recording your swing. Okay, truth, that's good. Truth, So that's the, the phone pocket. And staying with the phone, now that we're using our phones on the course for GPS and we're listening to music, yeah. there's uh, a really big problem that happens often that our phone runs out of battery. Uh, dude, brutal. So we've got a solar power bank right here. Got there a are solar two US power bank, okay. Two USB ports come out of there and hide throughout the bag. And one of them gives us this retractable oh, phone nice. charging cable. So legit, my phone's charging right now. <laughs> That's, that's retractable, so that goes in there. I can also store my phone in that little slip pocket. Super, oh, wow. when it's on your back, it's a great place to just slip your phone in. And then the other USB port comes up through this portal. This is all patented, by the way, or in patent pending. Yeah. Comes up through this portal <laughs> and then allows us to charge this bad boy, which is the Bluetooth speaker. What? So I can listen to music, I can charge my phone, I can film my swing, 
and I can utilize solar energy to do all that. Cool Super stuff. cool. And the bag looks awesome. Thank and you, I just yeah. put it on and it's very comfortable and very light. Yeah, the backpack strap, I mean, it works really well as a single. Like you can just throw it over your shoulder and carry it as a single. Yeah. But the, because of all of this padded, big, thick straps, it, it really does a good job of keeping the weight kind of uh, moved around. So it's yeah. all in one spot on your shoulders. And I saw a bunch of other cool features and he's being humble here as he describes this, but the ability to put the phone in and charge the phone at the yeah, same that's, time. that's pretty cool. Right? Oh, dude, it's a game changer. So yeah, so a couple of like real quick things yeah. other people are interested in. Um, I actually love this pocket. This is all magnetic, by the way. So there's no zipper. Yeah, I was hoping you were gonna Just say that. Quickly in, get your ball. It, it's gonna close <laughs> on its own. I'm gonna put it back in there when I'm done. Yeah. I can open this one, magnetic. This one's magnetic. Um, that yeah. alone would be like killer. It's a cool feature, yeah, it's right? that one thing. I yeah. mean, they're expensive. I asked the manufacturer, why don't all golf bag companies do that? Because zippers break. Yeah. And usually the zipper that breaks is from the pocket that you use the most. Yeah. So you're losing your favorite pocket when that zipper breaks. I won't mention my bag brand name, but I got a couple of zippers that are jacked up yeah, sitting over there terrible. right now. It's you the know, worst. It's a really good bag. It's, it's the worst. like, oh, I just lost my favorite pocket. So <laughs> I asked him why more bag manufacturers don't do that. He said, it's really expensive. Yeah. So the bag itself costs me like $25 more than it costs oh. one of these guys to make gotcha. a zippered bag for other reasons as well. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, you know, I, I want the bag to be awesome. Heck yeah. I'm willing to pay an extra few bucks to make it awesome. Absolutely. Um, that's that's why we've got magnetic pockets. And they can get the bag, is that Minimal Golf? Minimal, M-N-M-L, so minimal yep. without the vowels. Yep. So M-N-M-L-Golf.com. Beautiful. Uh, or Instagram, Minimal Golf on Instagram. Cool. Yeah. Beautiful, dude. Love it. Sweet. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm glad Appreciate you like it. it Thank you. If you want to learn more about this, go ahead right now and watch one of these two or both of these two videos on the screen. Really going to help you out and know that you'll really like it. If you guys did like this video, do us a favor, click the like button down below. That helps us out. Click the notification bell and please subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.